All right, recently I've been making some videos on the auction house. This naturally has caused some drama. Am I exposing real money buying and trading or am I making baseless accusations? So why not just go straight to the source and have an interview with the one and only Ziggin555. So let's get into it. Probably not the collaboration people were expecting. For those of you who don't know, Ziggin55 is one of the largest traders in Neopets and more famously, one of the richest. This is supposed to be a fun, friendly, and informative dialogue slash interview. This isn't an, an interrogation or a debate. I'm going to briefly explain the general format and go from there. So first, I want to unpack Ziggin's experience with Neopets as a kid. Second, what we all want to know, the rise of the king, regs the riches. How did he earn all those Neo points? Third, I want to end on some generic questions about Neopets. So it's a semi-structured interview. There's some questions. It might overlap a little bit. And if you want to see Ziggin return or have more questions for him, let me know. Or if you know some famous person who has some epic stories, leave a comment. So first things first, I've been calling you Ziggin and it's spelled Zingin555. How is your name actually pronounced? Uh, yeah, thanks, Whitefish. Uh, yeah, so it has got an N in it. Uh, so it is, I mean, people call me Zingin. Um, but look, if you want to go with Zingin, it sounds pretty cool to me. So I'm happy with whatever. All right, let's get into your childhood. Roughly how old were you when you started playing Neopets? Uh, first memory would be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give away how old I am here. Uh, 2001, which would have been, uh, I was born in 1989, so... Don't want to dox myself too much with too much personal information, but probably around, yeah, 11, 11 12 years old. All right. And how long did you play? Uh, so I played probably for roughly two to three years. I remember, yeah, I remember playing through to about 2003, 2004, I think. Okay. Do you remember your first account or your pet names? Yeah, so my first account was actually Zingin5, <laughs> which probably leads on. I think there might be a question later on when we ask why why I'm Zingin55. Uh, yeah, it was an, an homage to to the old account. I remember having a baby um, baby loop loop. That's a, that's, mm -hmm. that's a point of contention. Is it loop or loop? Hey, I say loop. Uh, called Fluffy Blue Pup. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. It was a little cute little guy. Uh, that's the only pet I can remember though. Yeah, I made a shoyru. So what? How did you first learn about Neopets? Oh, dude. Honestly, um, it might have been... It might have been at school, I think. I th I'm pretty sure I remember, like, a kid bringing a printout. Like, literally had just printed out, control peed his, like, rat battle dome or something, and being like... I, I was big into Pokemon um, back then, as a lot of millennials were. So I think I kind of saw it, looked, at, looked pretty cool, and I think that was how I got into it. All right. What is your earliest memory of actually playing Neopets? Oh, that's a good question. I remember playing like flash games um, at my stepmom's house. Uh, yeah, after after school, around two thousand and one, sometime. Pretty vague memory. It was a long time ago. Which game? Do you know? Ah. Uh... Look, I get teased by my friends for my pronunciation of this. I say, I say Mercer. I um, know it's meant to be Mercer, I think, but uh, I'm going to stick with my with what feels right to me. Mercer Chase. Yeah, a lot, playing, a lot of uh, controversy over that because it, like it's a meerkat, yeah. Merca, Meerka. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. I I come on here to like people are going to hate me for my like auction movements, and they're going to hate me for my <laughs> now they're going to hate me for my pronunciation of Neopet <laughs> names. So. All right. All right, so what was your main focus or draw when you played Neopets as a kid? Uh, unsurprisingly, it was making Neo points, which is obviously carried over to now. Uh, I remember, yeah, I remember restocking uh, in Bakery a lot, um, and I was really desperate to get part of a mall back then because the marketplace was a bit different. So being in a mall uh, was was access to a lot of a lot of profit. That's awesome. So what was your experience with the battle dome and your pet being trained oh dude i love the old battle dome i mean as as you go on the battle dome boards now and you see like the old battle dome was awesome so i remember doing a lot of the back then when you could just do the quick match like button and, and do like a pvp match um i like i was poor i had bad items and a weak pet but i remember just um really enjoying just sitting there and like searching for a match while i was restocking 
Yeah, I would just use snowballs, and I didn't understand they were multi-use yeah. items till much later. All right. <laughs> nice. All right, so you touched on about what was your experience with Flash games and all the fun games oh. Neopets had? Yeah, I wasn't a big Flash game player, which is carried over to now. If you look at my account, I've got very few trophies. Um, I was pretty big on, on making Neo points, and so not much of a Flash game player, I'd have to say. Did you ever go after any trophies, any avatars? Nah, really I didn't, man. Like, um, again, like, it, it's transferred over to my gameplay now. Um, I sort of disregard all that sort of stuff and just try to accumulate uh, wealth, I think. Oh, so you had no cheat trophy, no Snow Wars trophy, no nothing. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't remember having much. I really don't. I might have, but my account got frozen, so I, we'll never know. <laughs> What was your peak neo? Or, yeah, what was your peak neo point total as a kid? It was so different back then because obviously it was before all this inflation. Um, I, I remember having very little. <laughs> um, I restocked in like icy P twos. I remember like getting like polar chucks and a bakery. I had like a size one seventy. I, I doubt I would be worth. I was worth more than like ten million back then. I would say like I would have been pretty. I'm probably above average because everyone had no no points back then, but I was still pretty poor, I'd say. All right. And did you spend the points at all, or were you just amassing it all just for one big number? <laughs> what do you think, Whitefish? What do you, you think? I think, I think you were, you're going to amass it. You want to have a big, sexy number yeah. to look at it. That's exactly, what I did. Exactly, exactly. Yep, yep, that was me. <laughs> still is me, I'm afraid. All right. Did you ever finish the lab, Ray? I actually did, yeah. I have I have memories of doing the lab ray. Um, I think I had a lab pet, which I don't remember the name of, and I had my fluffy blue pup, which I was too um, emotionally attached to, to to potentially risk morphing in the lab ray. Yeah, that's my biggest regret. As a kid, I finished the lab ray and didn't know you could redo it. I'm still mad about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so did you have any end game goals or targets while you played? Um. That's a great question. Uh, I don't remember having one. I think for me, there's not so much of an end goal. Just sort of, it's a daily min max kind of thing, and I was just trying to get into a into a mall and and to just start establishing myself, like making a lot of daily neo points. I think. Yeah. Was Neopets at your school a popular thing you guys played and talked about? Uh, I well, it refers back to the, my answer previously of how I got into it. I'm pretty sure that one kid um, mentioned it, and I think like there was a few kids that would play it on the school computers at, at lunchtime when I was really young. Um, so I do have some memories of that. Yeah, I think it was definitely had a little bit of popularity. All right, and why did you quit Neopets as a kid? Uh, look, I quit because I I made a I think I made a bad joke on the Neo boards about there was an old user called like like gyro falcon or something and i think i like insulted him on the neo boards and then i i think i got ice because of that i'm pretty sure and then i moved to runescape uh shortly after so it was a combination of already enjoying runescape a lot um which was popping off back then and also yeah being a naughty boy and uh misbehaving on the neo boards that was my exact progression neopets runescape world of warcraft and then came back to them all yeah that's that's a millennial special right there. <laughs> yeah. So before we move on, just want to ask you: Are there any standout or awesome memories you have as a kid you want to share about Neopets? Oh, uh, I have one memory which is like quite a fond one of mine. Um, because I was restocking, it was right around the time in New Zealand, uh, which, uh, where I live. Sorry, I'm down the bottom of the world. Um, doxing myself pretty hard, but uh, we were right around the time early 2000s where internet was going from dial up to like adsl and my dad's work was one of the first places to get adsl so i remember finishing school and biking all the way across town to my dad's work to to, to get there by about 3 15 in the afternoon and i would sit there and restock on his adsl internet for like three hours and then he would he would put my bike in the back of the car and take me home so yeah that's a pretty cool memory I had dial up. I have nightmares about that noise still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit. All right, so that's going to end the childhood stuff. And before we go on to Zingin555, did you have any other stints between when you, as a kid, quit and then came back 14 months ago? No, absolutely none. Uh, it was always, Neopets always held a pretty fond, like, nostalgic place for me, as a lot of, I know a lot of people. Um, but no, I didn't actually play it all until 14 months ago. All right, let's get into chapter two. 
Ziggin55. First things first, how did you pick that name? What does it mean? <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, my, my childhood account was called Zingin5. Um, I don't even know what the hell Zingin is. Like, uh, <laughs> like, I have no idea. I don't know why 11-year-old me made that name, but it just felt fitting that I was coming back for nostalgic reasons to, to pick a name that had some significance towards that. Awesome. So you make your accounts 14 months ago. What's going on with that? What's the reason? Yeah, I think like a lot of people, uh, Neopets, obviously the new ownership, there was a bit more stuff out there on in social media. Um, I think it came across a feed of mine somewhere. I cannot remember what, but um, I remember seeing uh, maybe a YouTube video, actually. Um, I think by that um, Kevin dude that does a lot of good content. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I saw that pop up in my recommended on YouTube and, and I saw new ownership. I thought, hey, I'll, like, I'll make an account and just see see what those what the new ownership's been doing, I suppose. Shout out Kevin O Gaming. All right. So let's get into the good stuff, Neopoint. So let's break it down into brackets. How did you earn your first one million and how long did it take? Um, I remember really clearly a uh, brand new account. I got, uh, I think I got a Pirate Drake MP from, from that daily Cove place um, that was worth like 600k I think at the time. And that was like a massive boost for me to give me some early Neo points to start sort of like buying and reselling like Neo Cola tokens and those kind of things. So it probably only took me a day or two actually to make that first million because, because I got that lucky break. So like you just came back in and just straight to one million. Yep. Oh, second man. day, man. Second day back, I got, uh, <laughs> and I thought that was quite normal. I like because I it was my second day back doing dailies, and I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Like I remember that was one of the biggest rushes I've I've had in the game since I got back. I was like, oh my god, like all this all this money. All right, then let's move on to your your ten million from one to ten. How'd you do it? How long did it take? So I tried to get back into restocking basically straight away. Um, so I researched online like what the what the best shops in that were for, what the restrictions on the rarities with a new account. Um, I found that food, fresh food, and like Kayla's uh, potions was the two best places. So I jumped into there straight away. Didn't have a lot of success in Kayla's because it was a bit more competitive, but made probably made about a, a hundred to two hundred k a day in um, fresh food plus dailies. So pro I was probably making around the, the three to four hundred k. So that first 10 million with some other things probably took maybe a couple of weeks, like two to three weeks, I would say, on, on that pace. So you came in and you were just right back to the grind. Okay, because a lot of... I was I was straight back getting restocking until I got banned every day, trying to min-max everything. Yeah, just straight, I was hooked straight away. Okay, so you were one of the more exceptional kids because most of the kids when I played, we had no idea how the game really worked or how restocking rarity works. So, okay, this is making a lot more sense to me. So, all right, so then 10 to 100. Like, this is where, this is where things got to yeah. get harder, right? Yeah, so I, this is when I found Neo Neocord, like the Discord server um, and the restocking community on there. Um, and they helped a lot with um, how to restock better, more efficiently. Um, I started buying, I started reselling a bit around this time. So I would do a lot of um, Nurk Mid and Neocola token. Um, like I would buy them all up when they were at, at, at um, the crossover of like midnight um what's it called reset of the day in neopets where people would be selling it cheap and then i'd sell them in bulk for like more um i would do a lot of uh super shop wizard sniping for like pirate drake morphing potion like all the kind of daily stuff i built up a big list of stuff that i would search every hour so i was really grinding min maxing everything um that first hundred million might have been it's a really good question but it, it might have been a month or two i think maybe two months probably would would be about about the spot i would say just through a combination of a bunch of different revenue streams all right and that money you're just you're just always saving right you're never trying to spend a whole bunch Correct. use okay yeah yeah so i would actually i would go up to say 100 million and then i would spend it all at, at every at the end of every day i would spend it all on nurk mids on on really quick easy to sell items and i would be turning say 90 mil into 93 mil and 93 mil into 96 and a half mil and so on and so forth like i would go all the way down to zero and then i would go to bed and i would wake up and my shop till would, would be back up so it was a constant cycle of having more money mean i could make more money um mm -hmm. and really just trying to build up that liquidity as fast as possible so every day you're getting your roi you know buy a nerk for 150k yeah. sell for 170 yeah. like that nitty-gritty stuff we all exactly. try and do exactly just grinding gr like 
no life grinding basically mate yeah and like how long are you playing during these days is this like an hour five what's going on here what's the grind like uh yeah i mean probably five hours every night i mean I i'm like, fortunate to have a pretty good work-life balance um i don't have any kids so yeah I, I really got hooked by the game i've always been a person that struggles to play more than one game at a time i get really immersed in whatever game i'm playing and that was neo pets still is neo pets really to this to the stage um yeah i was just getting home uh, and restocking in oceania in the um, continent i live um all the americans are in bed as well so it's right around this time of night now when when you're probably going to bed shortly um so restocking was pretty uncompetitive um and yeah i could just jump on and grind for sort of get home from work grind until i go to bed basically wow okay that's that's very impressive, actually, because I can't do that. All right, now, now to eclipse me, how'd you go from that 100 to the 1 billion, the dream most people have that play Neopets? <laughs> yeah, again, it was just a, a, a process of having more money meant I could, I could start flipping, like, saps around the uh, event calendar. Um, Fairy Festival last year was a big one where I would be restocking in the shops where the, the pools were limited um to certain items so like i was restocking in robot uh p2s getting like griefers <laughs> and scuttle whatever they were and like i was getting multi i was making 10 20 million a day from that um like i was um around a, uh the fairy festival when the um the two I, I forget the name of the two weapons they got released like uh they got released in the auction house and i was i'm quite good at auction sniping so i was making yeah again i was up i was moving to making sort of 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 million a day and that just allowed me to start buying and reselling it was more or less restocking at this point it was more reselling and, and so the margins were higher so yeah i probably moved to to 1 billion um maybe maybe around four to five months in i would say um took me quite a while to make my first billion so that was after the sap right that was after the ac calendar Correct. This was okay. early this year, early in the okay. new year. Yep. So I made a lot, uh, made a lot of money through because Fairy Festival and and Event Calendar they create a lot of, um, like, price, like a lot of volatility, volatility in prices, right? So I make money as a reseller by using the volatility between people not knowing what something's worth, selling it for cheaper, and me having the the market knowledge to sell for more. So I could buy a set for eighty mil and, and sell it for ninety five mil, which doesn't sound like a lot, but fifty mil profit in, in one flip was a lot back then. I remember the chaos when they released uh, that stamp on the 20-something, people freaking out, yeah, and the yeah. whole bell sap, Absolutely. and then, then yep. you were also one of those yep. guys who was, because uh, um, one of the FFQ quests was to give a robot pet pet, and the ones that were above, like, yep. R80, it was, they went to a million instantly, and people <laughs> were freaking did. out, yep. and I was one of the good guys, I had a whole bunch of new Neil Cole tokens, and I'm like, if you guys got, need yeah. it, I'll, I'll give you one, and then I gave someone I one, and honest. he sold it. If, if people I, like i am a money hungry greedy person i agree but i remember back then if, if if i looked at someone's account they did look like they were relatively new to the game or and they wanted like their dream pet i did give a couple away or for like really cheap but if someone's account looked like they could afford two million for a griefer i like charged them two million for a griefer so uh, all those you said the word chaos anytime there's chaos on the site <laughs> it's an opportunity for resellers to make money basically so um yeah a lot of those events i would go through periods of not making a lot a big event like that i would make 100 million overnight for example all right and what are your thoughts about people who would call you a price gouger not a reseller just let's look a little curious about that <laughs> um i'd say that they're accurate <laughs> um i would say that that's very true i mean i'm trying to find um sort of weaknesses in the market or inefficiencies in the market and i'm trying to sort of capitalize on those so if i see a particular stamp that hasn't come up to sort of the market rate of all the other stamps i'm going to buy up that stamp and i'm going to put it at a rate where i know that there's buying pressure to take i mean people talk about fake inflation um, inflation can only exist if there's a demand at a certain price point so my um my ability is to figure out what that what that demand is get ahead of the market invest while it's cheap and then and then gouge people for profit in the future Nice. So you're nonstop going hard, always looking for any advantage. And if the if the sun's shining, you are making Neopets. And if it's raining, you're still making Neo, Neo points. All right. Yep. Now, this is the, like from one to ten billion. So that, when about did you get to about one billion? Is it like early February ish? Yeah, probably. Yeah, around that time, I would say. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Seven months grinding, four or five hours a day. Okay. And there was a lot of money to be made during the Fairy Festival and the Advent Calendar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So was that more or less the same thing? Like the same way you go from 100 million to 1 billion to just the exact same thing? Anything new there or different or is it just... Uh, yeah, 1 to 10 billion, I think the difference here comes in and in what we'll get onto <clears> this topic is that... Um, my levels of stock and my trades and the amount of items I was holding became high enough to a level where these shell accounts started to neo mail me knowing that I was a player that had a lot of stamps, had a lot of cool eggs, for example. Um, and so would neo mail me saying, Hey, have you got this item for sale? And they obviously, uh, shell accounts that are selling these items off site for real money. And I didn't know this at first, but then as I developed a pattern of of okay these accounts speak a certain way they pay more than everyone else because they have access to more neo points they want the item straight away um that's when my profit really started to fire up was when i started not only selling to in the sort of the insulated neo market when these shells started paying a lot more for for items that i had and then that was a snowball effect towards more wealth yeah so whereabouts were you before they got involved with actually neo mailing you uh, I was probably around that, that one to two bill stage was when it really started to kick on, especially with stamps. Stamps was the first big thing that it started with. Okay, I just want, just so we can clarify a little bit. So what's really going on in these auction house trades that have gotten, like I've made videos on just so, just so it's a little more clear for yeah. people. Yeah, so most of the majority of the ones that you've highlighted are from shell accounts, mostly buying cool negs off me. So I... Well, during the cool neg when they gave away the code i bought and resold a, a whole lot of them um and i had a big stash of them so because i was active on the auction house i think obviously the the shelves that wanted to sell cool negs off site my name became um discussed amongst them i would get neo mails saying hey can i get 100 cool negs for 600 mil for example and then i say okay sure and then because i can i know that i can sell for for six mil each then i can start buying on the auction house for 5.2 mil and so i'm buying up every cool neg on the auction house and then it, it develops the situation where i keep getting these neo mails for these cool eggs so i'm buying and selling like uh one to 200 cool negs a day quite often so um i'm profit maybe one mil on each neg and if i put through 200 cool negs a day i mean you do the mass that's a quick 200 mil profit so yeah the 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 auctions that we see mainly uh me getting money for selling those cool eggs and then i'll rebuy them back off regular players or off the auction house okay and are there other players who do things like that where hey they get a request from a most likely a real world trader hey can you do this do they exist are you are you just the exception yeah i think that there are there are uh, heaps of players that would have sold to shell accounts i don't think anyone is currently doing it to the scale that I'm doing it at. I think that's mm -hmm. a combination of uh, me having so much liquidity in terms of near points I can work with, so much level, such high levels of stock. The fact that I'm just per perpetually online and I'm always contactable, I think I've developed a reputation, especially, I don't know exactly who these people are, but I know based on how they communicate, I know which one is kind of messaging me at a certain time based on what they often order, how they communicate, what levels that they pay, how far I can push price points. Yeah, a combination of me having access to that many items as well as me always being online and being reliable. I think I'm doing it at the biggest scale of anyone, but you'll often see um, shells just jumping on the trading post if they need a certain item and buying it off a random player. So yeah, it, it, it's happening a lot more than probably people are realizing it. Okay, and you've you've kind of been dabbling here for a few months, probably since you said March, I think. So has the amount of people interested in real world trading gone up or down since you've been somewhat around this it's it definitely gone up um i think i mean i'm also more um involved in it now selling to them much more often so i probably see it more but i definitely have noticed um a lot of the people also that buy stamps off me um regular players i know for sure are people that have purchased neo points um because they have all this wealth there's no evidence of them making money and they are happy to pay a price point that players that probably didn't buy neo points um aren't willing to pay so i i think it's definitely increased i think there's a lot more people selling items i think there's a lot more people buying items and i think it's it's yeah it's more rampant than it's ever been 
All right, and just to get the players all a little jealous, what do you think the most you've made in the day or in one single trade was? Um, the most I've made in a day, I mean, I've had multiple days where I've made more than one billion. Um, I think ran, like events like the Cool Neggs being released, um, other like random one-off events or days where I just did a, a lot of volume and reselling some, maybe a day I sold, resold three super attack peas or I resold a high end, like a rod of duck Nova. Um, or I did like a heap of cool eggs in one day. It's probably around the one to 2 billion range. I've had a few days where I've made more than one billion a day. Okay. So I just want to clarify a few things because people are going to have questions. So I'm going to ask point blank to you. Have you ever sold ne Neo points for real money? No, I, I've I've never sold. Um, I've been offered. I've had um, real wood traders track me down on Discord and offer to buy items off my account for like uh, Bitcoin. Um, but I've always put a firm line for me that the game would lose all level of enjoyment and fun if I if I started interacting with that part of the game. Yeah, and that would make what you do way more easy. Hey, you sell a sap for one buck, they sell for buck fifty. It's really like oh, it, it moves just, quick. Yeah, it, okay, it just wouldn't be fun for me. Yeah. All right. Have you ever received real money or anything of real value from any single trade in Neopets? Just no, I've on, only ever operated uh, with Neo within the game with Neo points, and um, yeah, I've, I've I have a firm line because I think once you go down that path, it sort of makes everything that I've achieved. I mean, it's all irrelevant anyway. It's Neo points at the end of the day, but they have meaning to me, and I think if I if I bought Neo points or if I took payment in USD or Bitcoin, I mean, it would just it would kind of lose purpose I, I think i would lose all purpose with the game to be honest yeah it's not on the list but yeah i'll just ask so like you've never bought neo points as well correct i've, I've never bought neo points i mean uh, to be honest and not to sound too arrogant like it would it would cost a lot of money to get enough neo points like i have enough neo points you know i don't really i don't really need to buy any at the stage i think i make um the equivalent of like over 100 usd in like one day so yeah i would rather keep my money for for things in real life than buy new points. <laughs> All right, that's fair. So how do you overall see your relationship to some attachment with people who are more than likely going to sell the items you then sell to them for real world money? Yeah, I mean, this is a really good question. And this is probably the point where I'm more than happy for people to disagree with my stance um, because I totally understand. And, and if it was up to me, like the game would have complete 100% integrity and the game would be pure like that. I think that would be a better Neopets experience. Um, for me, I see these players as just like NPCs in an RPG. I mean, it's part of the game at this point. I think that, yes, I'm absolutely facilitating it. However, um, I don't think if I stopped doing it, it would make a notable difference to what's going on. And for me you can't really i just want to min max and make as many what i want number to go up i want to min max and and make as many near points as i can and because of how the market is and how rampant it is you can't engage with that level of profit and wealth on the site without interacting with these with these people so yeah they're npcs in an rpg for me and i sort of if people choose to disagree and think that i shouldn't be doing it i absolutely respect that stance and and i think that it's a completely logical stance to take as well so yeah, I, I was gonna ask that more specifically. So like to the people who were like, "Hey, this this should be punishable." What's your general attitude? Just hey, that's your opinion, and I don't see it that way. I see it this way. Yeah, okay. look, I I respect I totally respect that opinion. I think that the uh, that I think that I'm very visible, and it's easy to to direct that sort of animosity towards me. I think that the real issue is TNT allowing this rampant level of real world trading and the people that are actually buying items with neo points the botters that are actively setting up these bot farms um that are doing it like it's not my responsibility to vet a neo mail vet a, every seller and take a log and take a, a a stance of hey i won't sell only the shells um i think that the way that the market's gone it's it's very difficult to not interact with them and look that's absolutely something i could do i could say hey i don't want to do that however um I think that I deal with everyone on the site very kindly. I, I never call anyone names. It's To me, it's just a game. These are just NPCs in a game. Um, so for me, like conscience-wise, I feel I feel very fine with it. But I also respect uh, people's opinions. I just wish that people wouldn't attack my character because of the way I play um, a video game <laughs> without I'm not breaking any rules. It's not illegal. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I can totally... Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, for sure. All right, so... 
let's say you did get banned. How hard do you think it would be for someone else to take your spot? Uh, I think really anyone could do what I'm doing. Um, I think it would be difficult to build mm. up that um, sort of reputation that I have now of reliability, the amount of uh, stock and like uh, liquidity that I have access to, I think would take a long time to build back up. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's, there's nothing special about me that, I mean, it's, it's just more a time and, and dedication kind of thing. I think that it's, I'm definitely replaceable. All right. So let's talk a bit about the botting. So what can you reveal if anything about either the real world traders or the bot farms? Um, I think that one thing that people probably don't understand is that there is probably a distinction between there's quite a lot of players who aren't actually botting that are actually selling items for real world money. Um, they are probably that what they are doing is they are either selling items they've earned normally or they're buying neo points for cheap and then using that to buy items and then sell those items. Um, bot farmers are people that actually have multiple hundreds of so the most commonly known one is the FC botter who has access to thousands of botting accounts who does the food club every day and they are generating near points out of thin air by by obviously writing scripts and having it all automated um so that's probably the main thing impacting the economy is the, the amount of people now and there's more popping up everywhere I think um it's becoming maybe a year ago there was only a few people doing that these days there's a lot more people uh, bot actually botting, creating a, a th buying hundreds of accounts, botting food club, generating near points out of thin air, and then obviously inflating items, buying items, that kind of thing. So I think it's a lot more rampant than than really people have any idea because it all sort of operates under underneath on a on a sort of a, a sub layer from the general Neopets game. Yeah, because in most games that have real world trading, usually the people who want to buy items to sell, they don't have unlimited cash, so. Is it mainly that just they just make so much money up on the FC FC food club and then just the daily slash whatever free cool nags free whatever? Yeah. So when I think of the word botting, um, there's you can bot the the shops obviously. So you can use auto buyers, um, and I think that restocking at the moment is is the worst it's ever been because the bot shops are incredibly mm -hmm. heavily auto auto bought. Um, and you can easily stumble across a shell account that has uh, a lot of certain items of certain rarity that they've clearly auto bought. Um, then there's also the bot farms that are doing food club that are creating near points out of thin air. So really, if we talk about mechanics that are making the game suffer, those are probably the two main, the restocking being being killed and, and items not going to real players. And then also billions of MP being um, flooded into the market daily out of thin air because of food club from people botting it and then um these these real world traders that bought the food club they now have all this mp that they can pay way more for an item that makes an item unobtainable for a real player who's playing honestly okay yeah because like i hear so often on dominic's amas how he's talking about how we're gonna combat inflation and yeah so it's just nice to kind of hear some comments about that so do you think tnt has actually done anything substantial to actually either fight people who buy or sell or use scripts uh i think they've it seems to me um and i don't want to say anything that would incriminate me with tnt uh <laughs> i can only see what i see um it, it doesn't appear to me like there is much being done to stop it from happening i see cheating um happening um and i know people would for what i do selling to shells cheating and and it's understand that distinction for me cheating becomes auto buying or, or botting um or buying near points and i see it happening in pure daylight or consistently um and tnt really don't seem to, to to do much about it from what i can see please don't please don't ask me tnt <laughs> I, i've said some mean things i bought to... i'll buy nc I, i'll buy 50 dollars of nc straight away please don't ask me uh, yeah i've said a lot more mean things than you said yeah. so far yeah all right so what would you say to the people who might hear this video and go hey he's doing it how like i want to become ziggin what would you say to the players who hear this and they want to hey like that um, that's awesome that's a great that's a great question uh make sure you have really thick skin um because i get uh daily neo mails 
uh, insulting me. I get people insulting me on the Neo boards. I get AMA questions insulting me. I get people in Discord calling me out. Um, so none of these people will actually ever, ever uh, ask me <laughs> what I'm doing or who I am. Uh, so yeah, I would say if you want to um, go for it, but yeah be aware that you will get a bit of pushback um and also there's better things to do in your life than just accumulate near points like don't be me go out go and play some sport or have a beer with your friends or something don't be don't be singing would be my advice and you might not know this but do you have any idea of just the value of what near points are being sold for or are you just completely not even concerned about that no no i'm fully aware so i i mean i find the whole railroad trading railroad trading part of the the game incredibly fascinating um i know that 100 million neo points is roughly around sort of the 13 to 15 usd and if you buy in bulk you can get uh like around a billion for about 100 usd which is yeah about 10 dollars per 100 mil would be and uh rates for neo points are the cheapest they've ever been which is an indication of uh, more sellers and more competition um, more competition in the market is lowering prices. It used to be double the price a year ago for Neo points. And do you think people are just buying raw NP or are they trying to be kind of sneaky where, hey, let's go buy <laughs> specific things like a SUAP? Yeah. Like what, what? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that a lot of people, uh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you about like a closed loop that sort of happens with a, a real world, ex well, an example of what happens for me is that, say for example, I sell 100 corn eggs to a shell for six for 600 million um that they then sell that 100 negs for um say uh, 100 usd on the site a person buys those negs because they don't want to buy np they then go i want to get quick np for my cool negs they list their cool negs zing in 55 neo mails them and say hey i'll buy your cool negs for 4.5 million each they go sick i just got these for free for for usd they've got lots of usd so that's fine i buy the cool negs I sell the cool eggs back to the shell for six six hundred mil. I make one hundred and fifty mil profit, and and so on and so forth. If you can understand that sort of gameplay loop, which is a ridiculous gameplay loop, um, however, it is the most efficient way to make new points. Like it almost seems comically broken. Like they have unlimited NP, yeah. then they <laughs> yeah, have yeah, items yeah, that is. perfectly that people can buy to get a large amount of NP. It doesn't look over suspicious, and then they they have so much NP they can have someone like you come in and just constantly make billions. They're happy, you're happy, you know. People get Great. forced yep. out of some items, obviously, but yeah. And then more than yep. likely, if you're buying neo points, you're also not getting in trouble. You're not getting banned. You know, it's it is what it yep. is, right? <clears throat> that's you, you're bang on. Yep, that's what it is. All right. Is there anything kind of that we're kind of missing out on, or is that just the general just the shit? Um... I think we've gone on pretty long. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize. yeah, we can probably, I'm looking, um, because we were going to do some questions on um, oh, yeah. some generic stuff. We, we can probably skip those, I reckon. I think people have probably heard. Um, I think uh, people might have questions, mm. and I'm happy to answer um, any questions. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm happy to be completely transparent about what I'm doing, because I'm not breaking any any rules and i know that this information is interesting to people so it's interesting to me as well so i'm more than happy to to share it all right one last little generic question what's it like being that rich in neopets uh i mean it's it's kind of pointless because there's nothing to spend neo points on um i do a lot of giveaways um i try and buy a lot of cute things i try and train my pet um shout out jimmy mars if everyone wants to just go look up jimmy mars um, on my thingy, I think he's a great looking pet. It's going to be top 50 one day. I just try to train Jimmy Mars all the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, there's constantly all these expensive items that are, that I kind of wanted to get a, are being re-released. So yeah, it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's not, it's more the, it's more making them that I enjoy than, than having them, I think. All right. Well, that's an interview with Zingin555. Thank you for your time. Thanks for being here. All right. Thanks, Whitefish. All right. Gonna...